Greetings, everyone. It's great to be with you. Our topic for today is meditation in depth 14. Meditation is the key and central practice of spirituality and for the mastery of life. Much progress can be made when meditation is practiced daily. We'll have a period of meditation first, but introduce that. I'll show you uh, some slides to inspire us and, and that are conducive to meditation and its purpose. And then we'll have the main body of our presentation, which will be a series of questions and answers. Okay, so here, here we go. You'll see before you now a most remarkable uh, engraving um, from a book uh, by Athanasius um, Kircher, who lived from 1602 to 1680. This is from his uh, book, Ars Magna Lucius, second edition. And what we're seeing is what's referred to as the sundial of celestial medicine. And this uh, image dates from 1671. It's actually part of the images of the rare books and manuscripts collection of uh, Cornell University in Ithaca, New York. And in it, you'll see in a way, a wonderful compendium of uh, human knowledge at that time. Uh, Kircher is a uh, very learned Jesuit, and he's also, to use a more modern term, uh, a scientist. In a way, along with St. Francis, I should say, yes, um, Sir Francis Bacon before him, who helped set up uh, the uh, scientific method, Kircher was very interested in observing for himself, going down into a volcano, uh, observing streams, how horses moved, all sorts of things, and set up a remarkable um, what had been called in earlier days, a cabinet of curiosity, the forerunner of museums. There was a museum uh, in Rome uh, that he had set up that people had come far and wide to, to see. He was looking at the macrocosm, the universe, as a way to learn about ourselves, our inner world, and how they match each other. He's combining his knowledge of Kabbalah, Arabic science, um, Christian hermeneutics, um, Things have been revealed through the uh, Rosicrucians and his own scientific work uh, in these diagrams. You'll see in a way our cosmic, our cosmic connection with the Tetragrammaton, the divine here. There's various things associated or cat categories to do with the must, months, the planets, and the sun and the zodiac, zodiacal uh, um, symbols and the great movement of the sun through uh, the the signs of the zodiac. You'll find a similar diagram to, that was inspired uh, Kircher from the traditional Rosicrucian, uh, Robert Flood, and also a, in a part uh, could be a reference to the Vitruvian figure that was associated with the traditional Rosicrucian, uh, Leonardo, in terms of how the human being is placed before us here. You'll see is both a macrocosm and a microcosm, the working of the vital organs, and also um, association with the sun, the moon, and connection with the divine, which we work with in meditation and we're about to underdo, undergo. Let me zoom in a little more and you can see the figures and the inscriptions in Latin and the various symbols there. It's quite an inspiring image because it sort of gives us a sense of how deeply interconnected we all are and how much meaning and purpose there is in all that's before us. Everything in a way is a sign uh, for how the handiwork of the creation was made. And in this meditation, we become more and more sensitive and more and more in contact with the inner self to convey these profound mean, meanings and matters to us. Related to this, I wanted to show you the frontispiece that was also in this text, the Ars Magna Usus, uh, or the great light of the, of the arts. Um, you'll see, you'll see before you now intriguing beginning of the book. And there's various subtle symbols in it, like the ones that we saw for the um, sundial of celestial medicine. In a way, when we do meditation, we're a way partaking of a celestial medicine for our healing of throughout our entire being. You'll see before us the uh, various ways that we come into knowledge. And here's the tetragrammaton, the, the divine, suggests the divine within that we contact through meditation. We also see here though, 
that the divine revelation, what he'd refer to as sacred authority. The Rosicrucians are not a, uh, a religion uh, and uh, not associated with any particular um, sect, uh, but it does assist us in understanding spirituality or if we have a chosen religion. Here we see the sacred authority, which from a mystical interpretation is their conveyances of the divine within, but we'll also see conveyances through the senses here, uh, but also through through the, the mind and also through the observations of, of nature that could be referred to as profane, but not, not in a derogatory, uh, just the contrast of the inner and the outer. You'll see sundials here, various workings that uh, uh, Kircher studied as a scientist. Uh, we'll see in the center here, a miniature of the portrait of Archduke Ferdinand von Habsburg, who was the eldest son and heir of uh, Emperor Ferdinand III, but uh, passed through transition before his father. And we see the, the sun, the flaming sun figure here. And we see um, of one polarity um, and the, uh, the moon figure here with the uh, staff, with uh, the owl associated with Athena, uh, the complementary figure with Hermes of wisdom. We see the choir of the nine angelic uh, types or the nine angelic choirs that we pass through or penetrate through as we move towards um, the entirety of realization that a, of a human is possible in cosmic consciousness. In a way, we'll follow then this diagram of the microcosm, macrocosm that we saw before this, the, celest the um, sundial celestial medicine will apply it in our meditation, but also this great ascent using our various faculties that we learn more and more about through living and through our regular and weekly Rosicrucian lessons and e exercises, and we'll ascend towards the, the fine, and then we'll make our descent again, but reinvigorated, re-enlivened by the divine within, as depicted at as above here, working in harmony with all these different faculties and laws and principles. So at this time, I invite you to prepare for meditation. You may wish to, at this time, close your eyes after partaking of the inspiring engraving before us. And if it's comfortable for you with your eyes closed, just take some deep neutral breaths, either holding the inhalation or the exhalation. And we'll work with the microcosm depicted so wonderfully in the sundial of celestial medicine. And our front and our front is peace engraving. We'll enter into the great light of the arts and sciences. If you find your mind wandering just lovingly and gently, bring it back to the gentle rhythm of the breath. No need for any self-negativity now or ever. It's all part of the process of growing and learning, including during meditation. And one of the wonderful things that happen when we bring our mind back to the discipline of the breath is that our, we increase our attentional control. We're more able to stay on task, not only during the meditation period, but throughout our lives and our work and on discharging all of our duties. I invite you to, to extend your exhalation longer than your inhalation to stimulate the great vagus nerve that we studied in our Rosicrucian teachings, key part of the nervous system, important part of the Rosicrucian studies, our weekly monographs is working with the nervous system. As we extend that exhalation, and automatically stimulate the vagus nerve. What immediately follows is the relaxation response. It's a great calming that occurs. Calming that's very soothing to our mind and bodies, and our whole being. Allows us to enter more into an integrated state where the master within can operate. We move more towards the gamma waves of the brain helps with that integrative state of being and knowing. It harmonizes the inner and the outer, the physical and non-physical. Following the law of duality and the law of unity. 
And by doing this breathing exercise, we can increasingly find that we settle ourselves to enter more and more into the deep silence or the meditative state. Just enjoy this process. Just let go of the cares of the day. I assure you, you will come back to them after this meditation and the presentation, all the more ready to see them in a new light, in a creative way, a more deeply reasoned way. See them in the larger picture of our mission in life and it's their meaning and purpose. Now by embracing these challenges, we learn their life-giving lessons to move more and more towards the state of mastery of life. Which is our birthright and true nature through the divine within. Now let us continue our meditation following the instructions of the booklet, Liber 777. I'll give it with, with you to you with the resources when Karen pastes them in the chat and uploads a PDF document of the resources later our presentation. If we're familiar with the booklet, Libra 777, it's great to keep coming back to it. As we mature and grow, so does it, and what it conveys to us. The document inspired by these celestial contacts, these encounters with the consciousness of the cosmic. By the cosmic, the Rosicrucians mean universal intelligence back of the cosmos and all natural and spiritual laws. We increasingly encounter and realize the cosmic through the lessons in life, through our daily meditation practice. Continue our meditation and Ascent to the heights of the celestial sanctum. I invite you to say the following invocation and prayer, which is comprehensive in its laws and principles and mystical elements. May the divine essence of the cosmic cleanse me of all impurities of mind and body, that I may commune with the celestial sanctum. May my mortal consciousness be so enlightened that any imperfections of my thinking may be revealed to me. And may I be given the power of will to correct them. I humbly petition that I may perceive the fullness of nature and partake thereof, ever consistent with the cosmic good. So mote it be. Now, fraters and sorrows and participants, However you're situated, seated, reclined, or lying down, your eyes closed, let us use all our inner psychic capacity and imaginative faculties to picture ourselves rising up from our room or wherever we're situated, from our home or dwelling or building where we're situated, up over our local geographic area, our city where we are, See down below the streets, the system in order. You may wish to radiate love and well-being to all those below. We continue to rise up over our county, even our province or state. Seen below us, various land forms, forms with the rivers, the oceans, the lakes, whatever is applicable to your area mountains, the farmer's fields, the high hills, the deserts. Keep rising up over your country or nation now. See the great weather systems and landforms, the various colors with the blues and the greens and the browns. And keep rising up and see now the continent where you dwell and even the hemisphere, whether it be the North or South Hemisphere. You rise up faster and faster using our psychic capacity and imaginative faculties to see the entire 
beautiful blue jewel of the earth revolving about its axis. See the moon revolving about our earth. So can you rise up through the solar system past the large planet of Jupiter, beautiful rings of Saturn, the great fiery ball of the sun. Let us continue to rise up higher and higher, applying the law of the correspondence. For as we go higher and higher into the cosmos, let's go deeper and deeper within ourselves to the divine within. Sense the vastness of the cosmos, also the inner vastness divine within us. You to rise up higher and higher past the Milky Way galaxy, our local home, into the great vastness of the space, a harmony of the spheres, great range of vibrations, all the octaves of the cosmic keyboard, great sea of vibrations, which is the cosmos, giving us celestial music, inspires the arts, sciences on Earth. Can you rise up past clusters of galaxies and even super clusters of galaxies? Enjoy the exhilaration of the ascent as we transcend space and time. Move from the finite plane to the infinite plane. As we rise up higher and higher, sense the great rotating action of the universe itself about a great cosmic axis. Stupendous harmony and order. Enjoy the exhilaration of the ascent, increasingly surrendering to the divine within. Moving from time to eternity. And move closer and closer to the midpoint of the great cosmic axis, the universe. When you come to its midpoint, slow up and dwell there for a time and will follow further instructions of the booklet Hebrews 7, 7, 7. Take in with awe the stupendous harmony and order and vastness and suggestion of the infinite, the center of the cosmos. So we increasingly surrender to the divine within and move from the finite plane to the infinite plane. Inspired by the ascent the suggestion of elevation of the co consciousness of the vast cosmic within and all around us. You may wish to picture now your sacred space, your celestial sanctum, possibly an inspiring temple on earth, some inspiring place in nature. Feel in all the sights and sounds of it now. Feel the exhilaration to be at the heights of the celestial sanctum. in the highest form of consciousness that can be grasped through us and in us. You may wish to picture incense rising up just like we rose up to the cosmic. Stained glass windows are symbols, Rosicrucian laws and principles. We learn week by week in our monograph studies and exercises and applications in our lives. You may wish to picture other seekers and Rosicrucians and students with you, the heights of the celestial sanctum. The officers of our order, the Grand Lodge officers, the Supreme Grand Lodge officers, and the Imperator may be conducting sacred ritual and convocation at the heights of your celestial sanctum. The visible and invisible masters. Fill in the sights and sounds and all the impressions of an inner psychic and spiritual nature. And when you're ready, just release the visualization and cre increasingly surrender to the vine within. In other words, be receptive. The consciousness of the cosmic. Which is always with us matter of us being receptive. 
insensitive, being dedicated, being prepared. Just continue to let go and be receptive. A deep sense of silence in the most profound form of peace, peace profound. Just continue to let go and surrender to the divine within. Let it soak up your being. Let us increasingly identify ourselves with our true nature, the master within, the divine within. And let us continue our meditation from the heights of the celestial sanctum. I invite you to undertake another spiritual operation of the work and worship of the Rosicrucian Order Amwark. Let us participate as members of the Silent Council in conjunction with the Council of Solace of the Grand Lodge of the Rosicrucian Order Amwark. Let us radiate love and well being from the depths of our being our heart and mind centers to all those who have petitioned the Grand Lodge for guidance and healing. Also, let us radiate love and well-being like a great floodlight going forth or a supernova bursting forth. Love and well-being To all those who petitioned our affiliated bodies of the Rosicrucian Order Amwark for guidance and healing. And let us continue to radiate love and well being to all those you, you know who are in need of guidance and healing. And let us radiate love and well being to all sentient beings throughout the cosmos who are in need of guidance and healing, making whole. Just let the great flow continue. Increasingly surrendering the divine within so it knows how to send forth this metaphysical aid while deeply enlivening the healing forces with each, each being in need. At a certain point, I think you may find the radiation speed up and you know you're reaching those in need. You may find too, that you no longer need to make conscious effort for the great radiations of love and well-being shine forth into the cosmos. When that happens, just increasingly surrender to the divine within. It knows what to do. as we increasingly surrender to the divine within in this great flow of love and well-being, let us be the cosmic experience as the cosmic experiences. Merge our mind with the cosmic mind, its true source and origin. Let us dwell in silence the radiations of love and well-being.
Soon for Adders and Sores, participants will formally close our period of sending a metaphysical aid, but we'll continue our meditation. Assured that the irradiations of love and well-being will continue from us as a way of life and an ennobling habit. In the deepest meaning and purpose of life. On the law of service, the law of assumption, the law of cosmic attunement, the law of duality, the law of unity. I invite you to say with me now as we formally include our period of metaphysical aid. If it pleases the cosmic, it is done, so mote it be. Our brothers and sorrows. Participants, let us dwell a while longer from the heights of the celestial sink. Identifying our mind with the cosmic mind and one with the one. Without intending it, but following the law of karma, the law of compensation, the law of cause and effect. Experience a great tonic effect from this healing session, the application of lost service. Enriched and ennobled, I'd invite you now to apply the law of gratitude. Express our thanks to all those who have guided us well. To all those who have loved us well. To all those who have sacrificed for us. all those who labor for the well-being of all. And through the law of gratitude, we come even more into the application of the law of cosmic attunement. Now, fires and swords, participants, time has come to formally conclude our period of Meditation. Begin our descent from the heights of the celestial sanctum. Moving at tremendous speed beyond the speed of light. Past the super clusters of galaxies, the clusters of galaxies, and the individual galaxies. Join the exhilaration of the ascent. Knowing that the cosmic attunement partaken of continue after this period of meditation, express it through self, through all the forms of consciousness that express that cosmic consciousness, the objective consciousness, the subjective consciousness, the subconscious, the overarching cosmic consciousness. See in the distance our beautiful spiraling galaxy of the Milky Way and plunge into the great arm, which is our local home, past the myriad stars and stellar phenomena and black holes, quasars and pulsars, asteroids and rogue planets, interstellar gases, beauty and wonder of it all, the great system and order. And see in the distance the beautiful elliptical orbits of our solar system, planets, the great fiery ball of the sun, the beautiful glowing moon, the beautiful blue jewel of the earth, our temple of and home. I'm going to return back to the hemisphere we left off, the continent, country or nation, province or state, the county, geographic area locally or city. I invite you to stay with me. 
another prayer and invocation, applying the law of purification. May the God of my heart sanctify this attunement of self with a celestial sanctum, so mote it be. And let us continue to ascend our neighborhood, building or dwelling or home where we left off, room and however we're situated. And when you're ready, fighters and swords participants, you may wish to open your eyes and stretch, feeling remade, a new way of seeing, re-energized, rested, and more integrated, more fully ourselves, more creative, more clear in mind. Thank you. Now we'll continue with our presentation, meditation in depth 14. First question we're going to consider is, how do I get settled to do meditation? Well, a very important part of that is letting go. And it's okay to let go. It doesn't mean ignore. It means so that we can learn and use our full range of faculties. Now, I'll approach this from various angles. And depending on what you may be experiencing and challenging and getting settled. You know, the breathing art exercises that we did at the first part of this formal meditation period can help us make the transition to entering the silence of the meditative state. Meditation calms us. There may be something challenging going on in our life, something stressing us, a particular pain or uh, degree of inharmony, inharmony that we're working to build up in our health. We can let go. I know that sounds like a tall order, but the master within will let us do that. But as we let go and release, we'll find that we'll come back stronger. We'll come back in that more integrated state. Sometimes it helps to use a guided meditation recording, such as from Rosicrucian TV, which I know many of you are familiar with and will be in the resources. And that can help, set, help, help us settle and let go, just like the person guiding us in our meditation we just did, and help us, oh yes, keep focused. And when we do meditation together, yes, that helps us. Each of us is helping the other through law of suggestion, but also through law of attunement and cosmic attunement. Those things can also help us get settled. Also, one thing that can help us get settled is to realize that it, in letting go, we come back to whatever is concerning us, feeling rested and re-energized, a more integrated state of realization. So we're more able to act Assess, assess issues in our lives um, more accurately and precisely, and also how to maturely act uh, toward their, their resolution. If we're finding that we're particularly upset at something, it's okay to take a little extra time to settle down. Um, we have things that are due in our sanctum, for example, associated with drinking a cool, cold glass of water, uh, washing our hands, all these things help settle us. The, the enriching vibrations of our home sanctum also help settle us. We may wish to picture inspiring things that have happened in our lives, like Magister Kelpia said in his book on meditation prayer to king, kindle that inner spiritual fire and transmute the challenging situation. And then we can use our imagination more to make not to build things up as how dramatic they are to be use the imagination in a more constructive way with all our other faculties to see them in perspective. All these things will help us get, get settled. I'll say some more things on this that'll indirectly help with this question too. Next question is, how can I get more motivated to do meditation regularly? Well, we may find a variety of things helpful in this regard. One thing is we can look at where are we very disciplined in our life already? Are we very disciplined to go jogging or, or do a particular sport or exercise? Are we very disciplined in how regular we are when we have our meals or when we wake or rise um, or in certain profession that we have, which we proceed in a very disciplined way? What were the lessons we learned that are transferable um, to be very disciplined and regular to 
transfer those uh, to do that with meditation. We can think of meditation uh, as a mini retreat to be refreshed and recharged so we can function better in an enjoyable way. That in itself is a great motivation. Also something that can be challenging for us meditating regularly, we, we may get overly concerned uh, if we think we're not doing meditation well or not. It's good just to let go of that. Uh, we're not trying to solve something during meditation in an explicit way. Yes, it's a very important part of problem solving and we can take problems into meditation, but then we release them, let the divine within bring them forward. So we don't have to dwell on, are we getting the answer or not? The important part of that is letting the deeper part of nature come out and relaxing the outer self relax. In the book, uh, Sanctuary Self by Past Imperator Ralph M. Lewis, one of the analogies he uses, that if you're in a great uh, theater and there's actors that are gonna come out on stage, there's a point where things go dark. You anticipate that they'll come the actors will come out from various doorways and the curtains will come forward. Meditation could be like that. We, we dwell in preparedness, either for general enlightenment or healing for a particular question we've taken into uh, meditations of a simple, direct nature. But we don't need to be concerned if we're doing it, doing it well. Sometimes the answer will come later. Always there'll be a degree of enlightenment, a degree of upliftment from our period of meditation. Even if we feel we've been, mind has been wandering much of it, you know, without self negativity, just keep coming back. Even a brief period of cosmic attunement is greatly uplifting. And often we won't fully experience it until later in the day and we'll know it was something that we did during meditation that percolated up through. Sometimes we'll have that uplifting impression during meditation, but don't, we don't need to be concerned, concerned about that. It will come forth. And all these things can help us and be more motivated to do regu regularly. Um, because as we have those benefits, that says, ah, yes, I really do feel the need to meditate. Um, and if the duration of a meditation seems dawning, it's okay to do shorter periods of two minutes or five minutes or longer, and then and work to have more multiple short periods over the course of a day. You can think of this in terms of a, of what might be called a dose response curve. That is, as we increase the dosage, the amount of meditation, we'll find you can individually explore this in your own life. Um, I think you'll find an increasing response that is quite wonderful and healing. We know this from our Rosicrucian teachings and laws and exercises. And we also know this from randomized controlled trials that have been done uh, by um, physiologists and psychologists. Also, one thing that can help motivate us to meditate is when we're in periods of illness. Now, it's good to be meditating regularly to build up the cumulative effect. But if during illness we can have more, increase the doses of meditation, now it can have a great healing effect. It'll help with pain reduction, whether that pain is intermittent or chronic. And we know this from our Rosicrucian studies and laws and principles and exercises, but also again, the randomized control studies have been done in the health field. In addition, you know, to all the things that we're doing with the course of treatment to deal with that pain as a signal that have been specified to us by a qualified health professional. Also, we can use time for meditate increasingly, be more motivated to do it. If we're finding challenges falling asleep, meditate. And we can let go of concern about mind wandering. Just keep coming back to the discipline of the breath. That'll help us to have that restorative, re-energizing and restful of, of meditation, but also once we fall asleep, there'll be a richer sleep that does all those wonderful things for us health-wise. Also, there can be various activities, like we may be waiting in a doctor's room or waiting room or waiting in line. Um, we can let, you know, let our eyes partly close and meditate then. Or if we're riding public, transportation or whatever, there's a period where we can let go some, maybe even just close our eyes slightly to maintain some contact with the objective space. And 
Also, one thing that's helpful to motivate us to meditate is it needs to be seen as a priority with many benefits of oneself and others who are in contact with us daily. And we can bring back to mind many benefits we've experienced through meditation in terms of deeper sense of meaning and purpose in life, all the health effects that we've experienced. In this way, we can start to realize that meditation is as fundamental to living as breathing and eating and drinking water. In this way, it's a deeply nourishing to our whole, whole nature. Also, as I've mentioned, recalling the benefits we've experienced of the value of meditation, we can feel the need to meditate to release stress, see things more clearly, to enjoy living, and to be in inspired. And why not do things that improve our health? And then we can pass on that health and well-being to others much more easily. Indeed, our bodies and minds and whole being are greatly appreciative of relaxation, for calm, for healing, for health, and a sense of purpose and meaning. And our divine within is very much looking for to us to meditate so it can rise and be in contact with us. And we can be increasingly sensitive to it and realize it is our true nature. All these things in the short and cumulative effects of meditation can help motivate us to do it regularly. Next question is, can meditation help me to enjoy work? Yes, particularly if we're doing work that is suitable for us. And it can also help us to make work more, you know what suitable work is for us in this incarnation and for our mission in life. We know from our Rosicrucian studies and exercises and from randomized controlled trials done in the health sciences, that meditation leads to better working memory, more creative thinking, more attentional control to stay on task, that is increased um, cognitive functionality. Also meditation helps with autonomic balance, that is to balance the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous systems, to help us have a more enlightened state of being. It also helps build up self-compassion and self-acceptance. It also reduces anxiety and elevates our mood. All these things help us to enjoy work. And it's quite beautiful. The, the Rosicrucians have a term and a, and a phrase, a uh, pair of terms and a phrase called work and worship. And by work, that means to do things, to do, commune with the divine, to study the divine laboratorium that's all about us. Remember those Beautiful engravings by Kircher, the great explorer, the inner and outer worlds. That in that work, um, we can to I know the, all the low, all the laws and principles of existence and apply them in our work. This is the way it spiritualizes our our work. But all these benefits of the Rosicrucian exercises, including centrally meditation, help us enjoy our activities and know for the right to be guided as the right way to act. And we can see that just as our heart works, it also rests in that in between beats. And as we meditate, our heart becomes more efficient, slows up, moves into optimal heart rate variability, causing that autonomic balance, that state of enlightenment. So too by analogy in our own lives, as we work, take time to release and let go, stand back and assess, we'll work more efficiently. And even in those periods of rest, allow us to get more done. I know, for example, one way of I've got a challenging task to do, maybe very detailed or very conceptual, very hands-on in various ways, have a period of meditation, even five minutes, if possible, half an hour, one will proceed through it much more efficiently. It'll be time well spent. Next question is, does meditation assist those who are experiencing schizophrenia? The answer is yes. We, we know from research studies on meditation and schizophrenia, and I'll give you uh, one such reference, that practicing meditation can be safe for persons diagnosed with schizophrenia. Also combined with treatments prescribed by health professionals, meditation can also have health benefits addressing schizophrenia. Now, while being an Amarok student involves, of course, more than practicing meditation, it's good to see that meditation as a central practice in living can have noted value for, for these individuals having this health condition. 
And I can also mention in an article I'll give you the reference for that was entitled Mindfulness-Based Interventions for People with Schizophrenia, subtitled A Systematic Review and Meta-Analysis. And I know many of you do systematic reviews and meta-analysis where evidence from multiple scholarly research studies are combined so you can get an, get an overview and synthesis. In a way, when we take that time to be quiet and contemplate, we synthesize our experience in a way of doing a systematic review and meta-analysis of our life. In that particular study, it showed that uh, what it referred to as MBIs or mindful based, mindfulness-based interventions uh, along with standard interventions for schizophrenia through psychology, psychiatry, and medicine, uh, can generate significant improvements in a variety of clinical schizophrenia-related uh, parameters or, or conditions, uh, such as the intensity of overall symptomology or symptoms that are being reduce, reduced, boost in positive symptoms, uh, reduction in negative symptoms, also one's capacity to function, uh, with the that health condition increases in itself is a great benefit, and also the awareness and of the of the illness and how to act and work with it uh, is improved. So, in inclusion that article is looking at uh, ten studies that fed its criteria. Uh, it indicated that there is evidence that supports the effectiveness of, and safety of mindfulness based. Uh, interventions such as the meditation we did today would be applicable for the treatment of people with schizophrenia. You know, deep down, uh, each person is doing their best. And we're never to be judgmental. This is why it's so important for each of us to rise up into the cosmic and deep into the divine within, to radiate love and well-being to all in need. Now, the next question I want to answer is, is meditation in complete science, silence the most advanced form of meditation? In essential terms, no. However, it's important or valuable to have times where we do meditation in complete silence, because um, that can also assist us in going deeply into the silence within us. That outer silence can help clothe impressions to that deeper inner silence. Always we can use our outer world and symbols to help clothe those deeper impressions uh, with the divine within. Now, it can be, can at times be more challenging to, to meditate in complete silence, not saying any words, you know, in guidance, no music, no sounds of nature and so forth. Um, but it's good to practice that because sometimes it's necessary. We don't have other supports with us to do that. I know during challenges, times when we're stressed, it's can helpful to have guided meditations like recordings on Rosicrucian TV. And it can be good uh, to hear nature sounds. I know many of us are surprised by if we're in a park or a conservation area or we live near a, uh, a tree and we have our window open, just hear, hear the sounds of, the, uh, of nature, can water moving or the sound of the wind makes going through a tree. That can be all inspiring of the higher octaves of the cosmic keyboard to help us in rings. And music of an inspiring nature can assist us. As I say, it can be good to be able to meditate in silence and practice have a practice under a wide range of conditions. So whenever we need to meditate, we can more readily do so, whether at work, at home, or traveling. Through these various methods with complete silence or guided, the important point is we're entering the meditative state, cosmic attunement, and you can uh, assess what works best for you. Now, as a final question we'll deal with, will meditation help me face and learn what I'm avoiding and thereby help me to make a breakthrough in living. Yes. Indeed, meditation is a profound act of non-avoidance. Or more known, known or more known technically in psychology as meditative, I should say metacognitive non-avoidance. That's one of the things, you know, being more mo motivated to meditate at first thing say, wow, I have to face myself in meditation. But meditation will give us more than enough strength to handle these things and make breakthroughs. If we are ready, if we're ready to do so, meditation, very viable indeed, we need to let go of who we are, who we think we are, our ways of thinking and feeling, and be ready to improve on those, even if they're very good, 
there's a degree of improvement or perfection to be taken. In some ways, we can be our own worst enemy, worst enemy, and that letting go of who and where we are can help us reform ourselves. And others don't need to point out our faults uh, as much, you could say. Indeed, when we're in trouble, it can be important to ask, who am I? This question has the piercing quality of truth to come to the fore in our realization. Needed insights, mature direction, courage to proceed on a new path will come forward as the divine within sees us we're serious on the mystical path. And that'll allow us to face whatever we need to embrace it for its life-giving lesson, as emphasized by past imperative character, Harvey Spencer Lewis. That way we can receive the inner self, which is beyond uh, any trials or tribulations, and will give us great enrichment. Through meditation, the resources, the inner self, the master within, the divine within, come to the fore. There, the resources are infinite. And then the movement or flow of all the systems in our, in our body, whether they be the nervous system, the circulatory system uh, with the blood or the respiratory system, the vital life force, and many more systems, they'll increase and they'll improve in their effectiveness. Similarly, the movement or flow of our emotional system, our mental system, our overall nature will get unstuck, will increase flow in an unimpeded, harmonious manner. We'll know all the more the purpose and meaning of life, the great wisdom of the ages, the great sense and purpose and exhilaration of being at one uh, with the one. At this time, I'm going to do the conclusion, and I'll ask Sora Karen to paste in the chat the resources for you. They'll be in three paste. And also, I think you'll find most easily to access them. They'll be in a, uh, a PDF document that uh, you can do download if you uh, wish to consult the resources. So in conclusion, I'd like to, to mention, as Karen does the pace for you, that we, we've considered some common and not so common questions about meditation. And we've continued to explore how meditation makes for the most direct and sure wise counsel in our daily lives and increases our well-being and capacity for service. And as the Rosicrucians are very practical, we've outlined the laws and principles that are part of it that we learn in our weekly uh, studies of the monographs, practices in our lives. And we did meditation itself to experience these things firsthand, where it's crucial in mysticism to have the firsthand direct experience of the divine. Thank you.